Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and as you can probably tell by the title of this video and how it is starting, I um, filled up the frame here with my lovely, lovely mixed media goodies. So this is practically every mixed media item I own in my stash. There are a few exceptions of things I did not bring out that you might consider mixed media, some people might not. None of my ink pads are in here. I know some people utilize those in a mixed media style. So those aren't in here. Um, I don't have my tools in here, so things like stencils, texture, combs, anything like that's not in here. These are strictly the mediums. But holy cow, putting them all together here, and I will say, um, I think you get a peek of everything in frame. I tried to lay down some so you guys could have actually know what things were, not just by the caps. But I thought it'd be really fun to go through everything today and see what you guys might have in your stash versus what's in my stash. And I know it's probably going to be um, a lot more than what other people have. And again, some things in here aren't included. Like I said, no inks. None of my actual acrylic paints meant for painting are in here. Some of my crafty paints are, but none of the acrylic paints I generally use just for paintings are in here, but I tend to use those on layouts here and there. Uh, but I don't even know where to begin. I guess we'll start sort of here in the middle with something I consider mixed media, but a lot of people don't have or don't, oh, I thought this might happen. Or don't use. So if there's anything you see in this pile here that you want to see me use throughout the month of November for my minimal mixed media series, please, please, please let me know in the comments down be below so I don't miss out on your request because I'd love to use up some more of this stuff in ways that you guys will find useful and that you can mimic with your stash. And some of these I've already used, so hopefully you can get some ideas along the way and I'll point out what I have used before. First up, paint pens. So these come in oil, they come in several different types. I can't tell if this one's acrylic, pigment. Okay, so we got an oil and a pigment. Uh, I have used one of these on a uh, process video a month or two ago. So I have used paint pens before in my process videos. I don't know how I'm gonna put everything back. That might be the hardest part. Originally I was gonna tell you like each color I have, but I think I'm just gonna go with like brand and then general colors that I tend towards. So for these, I have Sharpie brand, and I have Painters brand, which is by, I have no idea, I guess it's just Painters, and these are from Target probably a few years ago, uh, but I use the neutral ones the most often, like this blue one's not even open, I don't think the yellow one I have is open, or the red one, so I definitely tend to use neutrals in these, if I do use them. Usually I use them on DIY projects, not so much scrapbooking or card making pages and if you guys are interested in seeing other types of crafty projects on my channel please let me know in the comments down below I'll set those right there on the side of the frame and before we uh lose any more of these guys or they roll around these are Faber Castell gelatos these were a huge huge hit uh, a couple years ago so I have several color sets here and they came in packs of three or four when I bought them at clearance on Michael at Michael's. So I have some warm tones here. So down here's the oranges, pinks, yellows, reds, and then I have one purple and several shades of green. I believe I've used maybe a couple of the greens, the purple and the yellow I just used on a layout. Um, so you guys can check that out. But a majority of these have not been touched. I find them very difficult to work with, but they're just such a unique item. Oh, yep, I've used this one. That one's, that one's been used. Um, I didn't like the way I used them on the other layout, otherwise I would suggest it to you guys, but the most recent layout that I did um, and used these on is pretty good. And it's definitely weird. I think they might have gotten a little bit damaged, like they're just a different texture than they used to be because of when I moved to Florida and probably got damaged in the move a little bit. But if you guys have these, let me know in the comments down below. I think it'd be really fun to try to use those again in a unique way. As you can also tell in this pile, I have things that are unopened. So this is a set of the Ranger alcohol inks in Sunshine Yellow, Sunset Orange, and Purple Twilight. I've had these since Christmas last year, and I still haven't opened them. They do make me nervous, uh, but they're really, really cool. So I don't know why I haven't opened them yet, but let me know if you guys have alcohol inks in your stash. I know they're popular with card makers more so than with scrapbookers, but I think there's definitely potential there. And then this item here is a different type of ink. This is an acrylic ink by Liquitex. And I believe uh, India ink is also really popular, but people love to use this for droplets on their pages. So I got one last Christmas. 
I've used it a few times to do some very, very light splatter droplets, and this is perfect for galaxy backgrounds if you do those on your card pages or cards or pages, and it's just a really, really cool thing. Now this will stain, so it's a very dangerous uh, sort of mixed media. I believe alcohol inks are the same way, but um, I only have that in the color white, and these are the only three alcohol inks I have, but these are all of the gelatos I have. So going on with that sort of liquid train, I have two liquid watercolors. Um, I believe I actually have some fine art watercolor tubes somewhere, but again, uh, one, I didn't want to dig them out because I know they're not opened and I know I won't use them because I have other watercolor options, but they are higher end and I'd rather use those for actual paintings versus scrapbook layouts. But I do have these two Ken Oliver liquid watercolors in the colors Burnt Orange and Ultramarine Blue. Now I have not used these on pages or cards, but I have played with them and they are so cool. I actually did some slow-mo uh, capture of dripping these when I was doing some artwork for a friend's um, publication. So I had fun messing around with these for that. And of course, if we're talking about watercolors, we got to keep going over here. These are some super old watercolor pan sets that I have. I don't know um, what brand they are, where they came from. They were sent to me, but I don't know who makes them. Um, they were sent to me by, it was years and years and years ago. Maybe like a Leanne. I know her name began with an L. And I still have several of the cards she sent me way back when we did swaps. But she sent me these, and they were my first set of... What I considered real watercolors, now these are very chalky watercolors, they're student grade, not like premium, uh, but they are still fun to use and I have pulled these out on occasion because some of these color sets are just perfect. Um, moving on with that, I do have one Prima watercolor that I bought on clearance. This is the confections line they did and this is in the color palms. I don't have a watercolor container so I don't have anywhere to keep this. Um, I think my intention was to buy more of these and then I just never did. So we'll keep it, we'll keep it. Um, I have my large watercolor set down here, which is the Michaels one by Artist Loft for $5. I believe I have cracked the lid at some point. Um, it's well loved. Again, these are student grade. They are very chalky, but they can get the job done. There's also a pretty limited color scheme, as you can tell. And I've really destroyed the blues, haven't I? Um, but again, they get the job done, $5. Can't beat that. And then lastly for the watercolor section, I have watercolor color, watercolor pencils. Um, I have two sets of these. This is the Reeves brand, which is the better brand of the two. I also have like a store brand. I think it might be the one from Joann's. I have used these on rare occasion. I don't think I know how to use them properly, but I do have them. And if you guys have them, let me know if you like using them and how you like using them. But I mainly bought these for card making, but I really, I really don't use them very much. And again, there's 24 colors. I don't know if you'll really be able to see all those, but I've used those. Jumping ship to something that's not a liquid or semi-solid. Um, glitter is definitely a mixed media item for me. I do love to use it. On occasion, I only brought out one of my colors because bringing out all of my bottles of glitter is definitely a recipe for disaster. So I pulled out this beautiful teal one, and I know I've used this on a layout for Wild Whisper a couple years ago, and it was super duper fun. And I've done a couple other glitter layouts in the same style um, for Patreon, and I just, sometimes you just need a lot of glitter and a simple glitter paper won't do. So you pull out your own glitter and you make it shine. But now I think we can move into some of the bigger categories over here. Um, so one little item here that's all by itself is this Perfect Pearls in Pewter. I'm not sure if people consider this mixed media, but as some of my subscribers have said, if it makes a mess and it requires cleanup, it should be considered mixed media. So I'm with you on that because a lot of these are messy. Perfect Pearls are a bit messy because they are a dusty medium that you put onto stamped images to make them shine or a wet surface really. Um, so I have pewter. I do have a few other colors, but I couldn't find them. I think I have three other colors and rarely, rarely, rarely use these on my cards or scrapbooking pages as well. Then stored with those, um, and if you guys haven't seen my room tours before, uh, majority of my mixed media items are stored in a mixed media tower, as I call it, which is a spinning tower from... Harbor Freight. I don't believe they sell it anymore, but if they do, I'll have it linked down below as well as my old craft room tour and maybe a new craft room tour is coming soon. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know in the comments down below. But this lovely pile of goodies and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wait, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 12 sets of Shimmers Paints Shimmers. And these are such a fun product. And I really have to thank, you know, uh, 
the wonderful, wonderful Jody over at Spiegel Mom Scraps for getting me hooked on these. Um, and she carries them in her shop for the holidays. And then, of course, you can get them at Shimmers. But here's some of the names. I mean, look at how cute those names are. Hi-Ho Silver, it's meant to be. Gold Glimmer, Silver Bells, Pull Me Closer, etc. And then, da, 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 da. oh, I didn't really pick the brighter colors, did I? Okay, so here's like an orange and a green. I can't carry all of them, but you guys get the, um, oh, they're so shiny. They're so glitzy and glimmery. Such a cool product to work with. And I have used several of these in the past. Again, when I was back on a design team, I would tend to use these a ton because it was just such a fun product to feature. Um, but now I find them a little bit harder to use because I know they're messy. And I know with my minimal mixed media, I do try to do things that are a little bit less messy or a little bit less involved, whereas this requires some a tool, some extra water, but really just treat them like watercolors and you can spread them around however you like. You could mix them into like a modeling paste. There's really a lot, a lot of options and I'm definitely not the most talented of the shimmers. There are tons of other great artists out there who use them and use them beautifully. So if you guys haven't checked out shimmers, highly recommend all of their mixed media products because I have some other ones as well. So now we'll jump over to the back side here, which I kind of grouped all these together. But first up, we have my two gessos. And if you guys don't know what gesso is, essentially it's a primer for your project. Whether it be canvas or paper, this helps keep the product from absorbing into it so it stays on top. And therefore the color is brighter, the texture is different, you know. So I have this one from Vicky, Vicky Booten is really new. Um, and I've only used it, I think, one time. But I really liked it. And then this Dina Wakely one's almost empty. And I didn't really love the clear gesso. I think I uh, prefer white gesso um, if possible. But clear gesso is really needed on some of those pattern papers. So you really have to just make it work. But you just put a thin layer of this. And there's directions that come on the bottles. But you want to put a thin layer on this on your project that you want to put mixed media on. Let it dry. And then you put mixed media over it. And it just combines into a beautiful work of art. But then the rest of this pile is modeling pastes and mediums such as that. So my recently, my favorite, favorite modeling paste has been this Crafters Workshop Light and Fluffy Modeling Paste. And this was bought off of Amazon again for Christmas. I love to make Christmas lists on Amazon, but this is such a fun modeling paste. And when they mean light and fluffy, I mean, I've barely made a dent in this. I would love to open it, but it is very, very um, flaky on the edges because of the way the closure is. So I really love this stuff. I think it is so much easier to use than traditional modeling paste, like the... Liquitex brand, which is a lot more expensive. Those kind of things, even though they're fine art, sometimes just simple ones like these can work really well. And then the other sort of pastes and mediums I have include three Heidi Swap texture pastes in teal, gold, and silver. Of course, classics. Everyone bought these when they were on clearance at Michael's because, I mean, everyone was into modeling paste a few years ago because it was such a simple way to add something onto your layout. This one's a little bit of an oddball. I've only used this a handful of times, but this is the Americana Deco Art Premium Heavy Gel Medium Gloss. And this is a transparent gloss that you can put through a stencil. You can do whatever you want with it, but essentially you'd want to let it dry in the stencil shape or whatever it may be, and then put another medium on top of it because this can act as a resist sort of item. But again, there are ample, ample ways to use this product. So if you guys haven't seen it before, I believe I bought mine at a small shop, hence the um, interesting price tag. But there's directions and, you know, there's tons and tons of ways to use such a product that I have not unlocked yet. Then I have, again, more Shimmers products. Um, these are the pasties in the colors Hold the Mustard and the Cream Team. I actually really, really love using the cream one. It's like this marshmallow fluff sort of color. And then the yellow's super duper bright and fun as well. So I really liked both of these and their texture. I will say this one, I believe, is older. And it is a little bit more... Uh, gooey if that makes sense but I kind of like it because it doesn't stick to your stencil as much so that's kind of a pro and con there and then this one's relatively new but I have used it already during my minimal mixed media series in conjunction with uh, the pasties so I use these two together this one's a glossy um, and this one's just a normal smooth flat finish so this one kind of paired really well to bring in a little bit of color while also doing some fun stuff. So this Bria Reese one was great when I used it. It is a lot thinner um, than the other pastes that I have. Then the newest addition to my mixed media collection are these two Martha Stewart glitter 
paste. So these glitter pastes are really popular by so many different brands, but my Michaels had these on clearance for $1.97. So I picked up two colors. I picked up like the Snow White, let's see what they call them, Sugar Cube and Florentine Gold. Interesting, but they're very, very beautiful. And like Nouveau makes products like these, uh, Brutus Monroe makes products like these. So there's a ton of glimmer mist, on, glimmer mist, glitter paste on the market right now. So if you guys haven't checked those out yet, definitely check some of your favorite retailers of mixed media products because they probably have some. If not, they're going to because I do anticipate the glitter paste thing will continue forward. And you guys might notice I don't have any Nouveau products in my stash, and that's not intentional. I just haven't gotten around to finding any that I wanted to try yet. I've come close to buying some Nouveau um, mixed media products. I do have their drops, but not the, not the other. Okay, all that's back in place. Now we get to move on to some other fun stuff. Um, I do, like I said earlier, have a ton of acrylic paints in my normal craft stash, but I also have a couple in my crafty paper crafting stash. So the first one I have is Jenny Bolin Ranger in Seed Packet. Then I have Tim Holtz and Ranger Distress Paint in Broken China. Then I have Ranger Adirondack Brights Acrylic Paint Dauber in Pebble. So these are all daubers. I don't love using them as daubers. I'd rather just use the paint itself. Much easier for me. Now I have used the dauber on the green one for sure. That one needs to be shaken. It hasn't been shaken in a while. It's feeling a little rusty, but uh, I definitely like the green and blue for daubers. This one, I believe I bought, and it was just not... You can even see here, it's already separating. This is the one of the oldest mixed media items I had purchased, and I don't know if it has a year on it, but it was definitely old when I got it. Um, so that wasn't a great purchase, but I do like the color and can still use the paints despite them not being dauberable as easily. Then we have Distress Paints, which don't have the dauber top. So again, just regular, regular old paints. But these are in the Distress colors. And again, I probably should have mixed them a little bit so you guys get a better look. But these are um, from Clearance at the good old Hobby Lobby from a couple years ago. We have Picket Fence, Antique Bronze, and Spun Sugar. I really like these colors together. And if you guys might remember, based off of these colors, I did use these together on a... DC layout a couple of years ago. I did a fun like striped background with these. So they've been used a couple times here and there, but overall I just I just really love this antique bronze one. So pretty. And then the last acrylic paints I have are called Acrotones and they are from Shimmer Paints. Now these are a self-priming acrylic paint, so they're goodbye glitter paste. Um, so these are self-priming with a matte finish. And that usually means you don't need a ton of like gesso or prep to use these because they are, you know, trying to solidify themselves. So I have these, well, I don't know the names, but I have a black, green, pink, and orange. And I think out of all of these, I'm just trying to see how much is actually left in each set. I probably use the green and the black the most. And I like to use these in several different ways. And I have used the black one recently on a mixed media layout in the Minimal Mixed Media series. So... I don't know if I've ever used the orange one. It's very, very fluorescent. Not usually my typical style, but that is all I have for the acrylic paints that are, again, just in my paper crafting section, not so much my regular crafting section because if you guys craft, you know, there's often other hobbies that trickle in and uh, I'm a DIY gal myself. But as we move forward, we have two main categories left. We've got Big paints. Um, I don't know if these are exactly considered acrylic paints, so we're just going to call them paints. And then we have the mist. Now, I'm not going to go through every color of mist, but I will show you some of the brands I own because some are oldies, some are newbies, some are goodies. They're all great around. But the first couple that I have, I believe I have me just looking at the tops. Okay. Oldie but a goodie, Glimmer Mist. When's the last time you guys used this? I have the Large in Pearl, which was my absolute favorite back in 2009, I believe. Um, and then I have a little set here, which I had Peach Delight, Candy Apple, and the yellow one. I'm not sure what it was called, but these have treated me poorly. Um, they have definitely stained my fingers. Um, I was just really, really not bad at mixed media, but I was very reckless with mixed media when I was younger and got these products. Adore what they do. I just, they're not in style now, so I often forget about them. But if you guys have Glimmer Mist still in your stash, let me know if you guys have these colors and want to see me use them. But like, if you guys have not, I wish I could maybe capture this on camera, but if you can look at how, do you guys see the movement of the glimmer in there? It is stunning still to this day. 
And these are like old. Oh, isn't that beautiful? You won't be able to tell in this one because it's too deep of a liquid color. But like I said, I do have other ones. And ooh, this one's... Oh, I thought it was completely dried out. And I was like, where did the liquid go? This one's almost empty. Candy Apple was one of my favorites as well. But moving on from that, I also have some oldies but goodies in these October afternoon. Yes, guys, the beloved October afternoon. These are the sprinklers um, from some different collections. I don't think they have years on them. And I will thank a actual closing sale. That's the only reason I got these was because of a store that was closing. Found some really, really good oldies but goodies. And I have three colors of these. So if you guys have some sprinklers, good time. And these are ink based. They're not as like the Glimmer Mist with Glimmer in them. These are just flat colors. And I do have these in my Inspiration Station currently, which I featured over on Patreon. I think I have one more oldie but goodie out here. Mr. Huey's from Studio Calico. I actually don't know if they make these anymore, but I got this again. Closing sale or clearance sale. This is a like light taupe color. I don't see the name of it on here. Oh, Warm Calico. Fitting. Um, but I know Studio Calico sold these at one point, I believe, um, or carried them, or was one of the last retailers. Yeah, Studio Calico. Okay. And I haven't used this one at all, hence the... Uh, clean top there um but it's i mean i'm gonna keep it forever <laughs> next up i think one of the um classics that everyone and their mother seems to have are the heidi swap color shines now i had missed before heidi swap color shine because i was a frugal crafter in college back when inky quill um adele you know hyped these up and sort of started a i don't know it seemed like she started the movement i'm not sure who actually did if it was like a joint effort but I fell in love with these. I had to have them. They started going on clearance at Michael's. I started buying them. I have several, several colors. I have a couple of the miniature ones. And then you guys know the iconic bottles. And you've seen a lot of these in my in my videos before because I own too many of them. But, like, they're just so cool. And they do provide that perfect shimmer. I will say these do have that oil ring problem, especially if you don't shake them enough. So that is always going to be something you'll hear is that noise um but i do have a ton of those as well which again just such a fun product i'm so glad i have them you guys may be wondering i own all these mists what the heck do i do with them i don't use them that's what i do because you can see here what's this i've had this for i don't know four years and never took it out of the packaging i have several of these recollection sprays and these are from the color splash line they did one summer and I will say, uh, did not live up to expectation. I also have this Recollections one. This silver one smells absolutely putrid. Um, it smells like the, uh, it, it just has a, it says it has a, uh, it has a sort of like vapor to it. I don't know if it's because it's metallic or what, but this was from their pastel line. Probably my least favorite spray, to be honest, but these ones have been okay. They are like that sort of tie-dye look, so while they do have colorant in them, they're not shiny, um, but they do have that flat look. So kind of give that watercolor look, but again, have one that's not opened, and I've had it for years. Then I have some random one-offs up in here. These ones are called Ditto Glimmer Sprays. These came in like a Christmas set, I think, and hence the red and green. They were probably a dollar on clearance, and I bought them. Not great sprayers either. Good for doing little dots. Spraying, not so much. Not that I spray very often, but if I were to, then maybe. Then we have some Dilutions ink spray. So recently I bought the black and white, but I also have the blue and green, the lime green. I don't think I've really used these to their full capacity either. I've done some dots with the black and white. Maybe just the black because this one's not open. <laughs> um, but options. I've got options, guys. And then to round out, oh, that's right, I have these. We're not done. I also have the Distress Sprays. This one actually is open. I just left the plastic on the bottom half. So we have Abandoned Coral and Broken China. We have a mini one and a big one. I think these are the only two colors I have. I didn't really like how these played out compared to the inks, for example. I like the inks a lot better than I like the sprays. But why not have a red spray that I'll never use? Again, a closing sale. This one, I'm not sure where it came from. Then lastly, the last type of spray I have that I haven't, I'm just checking some of these, is another Shimmers products. This is a Colorings, which they are well known for. Um, and these are wonderful colored, just 
they're just colored sprays and I did use this recently so you guys might remember and they're flat water based so you can mix these with water do some watercolor techniques really really fun um, I made the mess in this not the bottle itself just so you guys know so I have this little tall guy and that's all of my sprays do you guys want to leave a comment right now and guess how many sprays I have hope you guessed more than 15 I think it's 30. I honestly probably counted wrong, but we'll go with 30. Let me know if you guys have more or less than that in your stash. And I don't blame you if you have more and you don't use them. I'm the same way. I have a ton of them. Did I buy more this year? Yes. Have I barely used those? Yes. But maybe if they all fit in frame, it'd be easier to guess. But we're down to our final category, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this tour so far. I will not have all the products linked down below. I think that'd be a little bit hectic, but I will try to find general listings um, so you guys can search through different types of products. So I'll be sure to link shimmers down below so you can check them out. I'll be sure to link some of these um, other brands so I can link the Ranger website for you guys and some of this watercolor stuff. So I'll do some links down there if you guys are interested or if you're looking for something specific, don't be afraid to ask. I am definitely uh, pride myself on being an internet search queen. So if there's something out of stock and you want it from somewhere else, I can probably find it. But diving into the last pile, a majority of these are from the Dilutions line from Ranger. And a majority of these are not open. So I'm going to try to stack them here, even though it's going to ruin my beautiful picture. I have all of the colors. I don't actually have all the colors. I restrained myself. I saw these on clearance at a um, Michael's I was visiting, not even in the state I was in. I was traveling for work at this time. And I said, I'm going to put these in my suitcase and they will not explode. You know what? They didn't explode. But we do have most of the colors here. Some of the colors I just put back, I knew I wouldn't use them. The only one I've opened that I like to use so far is the white. I think this is so fun. But I've also used the lime green, wait, fresh lime, and the London blue on a layout. Again, for the Minimal Mixed Media series, if you guys haven't checked it out yet. And, you know, when you got a lot of paint, you just tend to forget about it. It's definitely a fun medium. It's definitely super fun and I think I need to use it a bit more um, and get the hang of it and have some more fun with it. But it looks like I checked all the ones in the store because I knew some people were um, concerned that they'd be dried out and that's why they were on clearance. But all of mine still have the the paint uh, sound inside of them. So that's good. And then the very, 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 very last thing which I grouped together with the paints over here. Let's put them back in frame. I know there's a lot of stuff here, guys. It is my Viva Inca Gold. I've had this for years. It is no longer what it used to be, but I do continue to use the dry version of it instead of the wet version of it, but it is such a pretty, pretty gold product. And they make this in other colors, which I've linked before if you guys have seen that. But look at that. It looks like, like frosting and I want to eat it, so I need to close it. But just another random product. It is normally like a painty, like modeling paste sort of texture. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it's supposed to be used for because there are no instructions. But if it's on clearance, I'm going to buy it. And that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But with over, well over 50 mixed media items, should I hug them? Can I even, I can't even fit in the frame. Uh, I definitely have a lot more inspiration to go. So let me know if you guys want to see the series continue into December as well because we only have a couple weeks here in November to get some more layouts done with all of this product. But let me know if you'd be interested in seeing it continue into December because I am not doing a December through February series this year. But I do, I'm, I think we're on the mixed media train and I think we like it. Like, do you guys want to see glitter or do you want to see the shimmers or mists or paste? What do you guys want to see me use next? Next, I am always listening to your comments in the comment section and if you send me Instagram messages I'm always listening to what you guys want to see next because I mean this stuff's super inspiring and I hate that I took it all out and now I have to put it all back and like remember where it was which if I was thinking I would have taken a picture of how everything was organized first but it'll all go back into my tower 
and I'll have all the links down below to the things I've mentioned in this video, including the Minimal Mixed Media series so far. So if you guys haven't seen the playlist and gone through all the videos, check it out, link down below. And be sure to give this a video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you want to see me use any of this stuff. But I am super excited to have finally filmed this video. I think it's just going to be super fun to sort of like see where you guys have similarities in your stash to what I have or if you have like nothing of one of the categories I've shared or if you want to get into a category that I've shared, please leave a comment down below with what you think of it. Maybe we'll do other types of, I don't know, it's sort of like a tour. This is my collection tour, my mixed media collection tour. But if you guys want to see a washi tape tour or you want to see a stamps tour, I don't know. Possibilities are endless, but my mixed media and I are going to go put them to bed, you know, back where they belong. And hopefully I'll be using a lot more of these products soon. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on future mixed media themed videos and other crafty videos that are to come. But thank you guys again so, so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below because this was kind of a one-off video I just thought of doing and thought it would be fun. And if you guys have YouTube channels or Instagrams and you want to share your mixed media stash, please do so. I think it'd be so, so cool to see what each of us has. And like if we have colors that are similar or products that are the exact same that we can inspire each other for, that would be amazing. But thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.